In this session, we shall be introduced to disaster risk reduction as a key role in public health emergency preparedness. Remember, disaster risk is defined by hazard times vulnerability minus capacity. Vulnerability to natural disasters. 95% of natural disaster deaths occur among the 66% of the poorest countries. From 1965 to 1992, more than 90% of all disaster victims lived in Asia and Africa. Completing the disaster management cycle. The cycle includes preparedness, response, recovery, and mitigation. There is an evolution in approach from response and relief to risk reduction. What is disaster risk reduction then? It is the conceptual framework of elements with possibilities to minimize vulnerabilities and disaster risks to avoid, that is prevent or limit, mitigate and prepare for the adverse impacts of hazards within the broad context, context of sustainable development. Risk management includes mitigation, preparedness, response and recovery. Risk reduction, on the other hand, includes mitigation and preparedness. Risk reduction is more efficient, more cost-effective, and more humane. This is the risk reduction cycle. From vulnerability analysis and hazard analysis, to risk assessment, to risk reduction, which includes hazard mit mitigation, and vulnerability reduction and this results in sustainable development and the cycle repeats. The figure presents an approach to risk reduction. The integrated emergency management approach involves hazard identification and risk assessment plus vulnerability analysis which leads to setting priorities. This goes to mitigation prevention strategies to reduce impact of disasters. This continues to getting ready to go if the hazard remains. This results in preparedness education, contingency planning, effective response and fast recovery. All this is underlined by feedback at all stages. Preparedness is actions that result in persons knowing what to do and how to respond after a disaster has occurred. The approach to preparedness programs is that it is long term. It is part of a larger risk reduction program comprehensive application of sustainable development, all hazards planning, it should be multi-sectoral, it should be user-friendly and culturally sensitive and specific. Objectives of emergency preparedness include preventing morbidity and mortality, care for casualties, managing adverse climatic and environmental conditions, ensuring restoration of normal health, re-establishment of health services, protecting staff, and protecting public health and medical assets. Mark Kane of CDC proposes 11 E's of emergency preparedness, including economic incentive, epidemiology, enforcement of codes, emergency plans, equipment stockpiling, education, exercises and drills, early warning, evacuation, evaluation, and the use of electronics 
e-health. Risk management. What is risk? It is the probability of suffering damage to life, property, economic disruptions and environment from a hazard for a given area and reference period. Risk is the product of hazard and vulnerability. Risk management is defined as the process of identifying, analyzing and quantifying the probability of losses in order to undertake preventive and corrective actions. It involves mainly two types of activities, planning actions to reduce vulnerability in areas where risk can be controlled and establishing protective mechanisms against the potential economic losses from uncontrollable factors of natural hazards. What is disaster risk management about? Disaster risk management entails efforts and measures put in place to reduce risk in case of a disaster happening. It is also about commitments related to disaster and vulnerability reduction and improved early warning. Since little can be done to reduce or eliminate the occurrence of most natural disasters, actions and activities should focus on reducing existing and future vulnerabilities to damage and loss. There are three primary and interrelated categories of risk management. Risk identification, risk reduction, and risk transfer. These are mostly related to the pre-disaster phases of disaster management. The pre-disaster phase of disaster risk management involves four distinct but interrelated components. Risk identification, risk reduction or mitigation, risk transfer, and the preparedness. Risk identification is a thorough analysis of existing vulnerabilities, location, severity, and intensity of threat. The following activities help to identify and understand natural hazard risk. Hazard data collection and mapping, that is with regard to frequency, magnitude and location. Vulnerability assessment, population and assets exposed. Risk assessment, probability of expected losses. Risk reduction of prevention and mitigation are measures taken to eliminate or reduce the intensity of a hazardous event. These measures address existing vulnerabilities through measures like early warning. They include actions such as implementation and enforcement of building standards, environmental protection measures, resource management practices, and the population control of population activities that predispose to risk. Key issues to note on risk management include even when effective disaster reduction measures are in place, there would often be an element of risk that is residual. Preparedness is an important component of disaster risk reduction which deals with residual and unmanaged risk. Risk transfer are mechanisms which aim at reducing actual vulnerability, the financial risk, in order to ensure that funds are available when loss occurs from a disaster happening. Risk transfer mechanisms are often inefficient from cost perspective, so it is important to take all the necessary measures to reduce the vulnerability of assets to be covered before transferring the risk. Without getting into the details, the main risk transfer, risk financing me methods include market insurance and reinsurance. This insurance provides coverage for damage and expenses that are beyond the potential 
for budget self-insurance. It involves paying or contributing premiums to an insurance company, and the premiums are calculated in a way that they spread out the risk. This is not yet possible in many developing countries. Risk transfer mechanisms also include budget self-insurance where a small proportion of the budget is allocated to be spent on improved maintenance. This can be done at a local government level, agency level, and even household level. It also includes compensation policies and they should target the most vulnerable populations and causes of vulnerability. Community insurance includes cooperatives, community savings groups, community granaries, community policing, and resource conservation. This is a viable mechanism of risk transfer in resource-constrained countries and societies. There are also household livelihood insurance mechanisms like savings, food security, proper settlement, and modern methods of production. The Hyogo Framework for Action assists the efforts of nations and communities to become more resilient to and cope better with the hazards they face. Although the primary responsibility for its implementation rests with government, Collaboration and cooperation between all stakeholders in managing risk is crucial. The Hyogo Framework for Action commits governments as well as regional and international and NGOs to ensuring that disaster risk reduction is a national and local priority, identifying, assessing and monitoring disaster risk and enhancing early warning using knowledge, innovation and education to build a culture of safety and resilience at all levels, reducing the underlying risk factors and strengthening disaster preparedness for effective response at all levels, community, sub-county, district, regional and national levels.